Hi everybody, it's Sam from Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this stepper card. Um, it's something that has been done before. This isn't my original idea. I actually needed a baby card. So I've become an auntie. So this is the card that I am giving to my sister and to welcome baby Charlie into the world. So I only had a very limited amount of baby kind of themed stamps and dies. So I had a little look on Pinterest and I saw a few of these washing line ones. So the ideas come from that. I've come up with the measurements and this, the kind of scoring in between I've done myself but this kind of concept you will see so if you just pop in I guess washing line card that's not what I put in but if you put in maybe stepper card you'll see a lot more ideas as well on Pinterest it's so so fun to do I actually made this during a Facebook live which was really good to do but you can see there if I just bring it up what I've done is with these concertina pieces in the middle here is I've actually put strips of you know, grass, and then I have the washing line with those lovely little stamped images hanging, and then I've put Hello Charlie on the on the front there. You do have space on the back. I've ended up putting a strip along here where I'm gonna write a little message, but I did say you could maybe put like an oval shape or something, depending on what you have here. And there are other ways that you can fold this. You don't have to have them all folded like I have. You could have one slightly higher, and I've actually seen some people do like a, a circle die on the front with their sentiment there. So there's, you know, lots of other ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you this version today. Okay, so the supplies that I used for that card there, I had this stamp set and uh, here's the bunny I used because um, we did say about using a bunny poking up from the grass. So I ended up going for this one here, which was from a card making and paper craft magazine, I believe. This one here, I used the flowers and this is from the Tonic Studio Garden Gnomes. Then I used the hello from the Bright Rosa and that was the friend's words. And then I've just pulled out bits and pieces from some old stamp sets. So this is Simply Cards and Papercraft issue 178. And I had the bird here. I was gonna have both, but I decided just for one. And I was gonna have the hello. I did actually stamp this. So it is there, it's beautiful. And you do have the baby hanging there and some other lovely stamp sets. But the most of them came from this one, which was by Creative Stamping Magazine issue 55. So it is an older one. And I used here the washing line. And then you can see you've got the baby grow, the bib, You've got the football, you've got the teddy bear, you've also got little booties there as well. And I use the laundry basket with all of the clothes in there as well. But you've got some great phrases, sentiments, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's a really nice stamp set if you're able to get it. It's worth looking on eBay, places like that. And then for today's card, this is the brand new A4 stamp set that comes with the latest issue of um, Creative Stamping Magazine. And this one coordinates with the latest issue of Simply Cards and Papercraft. So I made the triple diamond fold card with this one. So if you don't have this and you want to do a tropical kind of you know style card, then you could use this one because I know lots of you will have this as well. But it's nice that they do coordinate together. So that's what I'm using for today. Now I have gone along and done all of that stuff. I literally just really want to talk to you about the scoring and the, the cut lines and the decoration, you know, then is completely up to you. So this is the template I used during the live. So it's a piece of 10 by 7. So I made sure it was a card size that everybody could, you know, use. So whether you're using letter size, 12 by 12, you know, A4, you'll be able to make this card. So it's 10 by 7 and you'll see here I've just got the score lines are all in black and then your cut lines are in red. This will also be a score line. It just helps you when we do it all, but you do end up just cutting it. You see, it's very actually straightforward what we, you know, want to achieve and we just fold all of them through the middle so I'm going to keep this here so this is my piece of 10 by 7 and you can actually use a pre-made so if you've got pre-made 5 by 7 cards that you've brought from the shop do make sure that they are bang on 5 by 7 because some you know in the shops will be a little bit smaller but just open it out and you can use that because one of the score lines we do is at 5 all the way through okay so first of all what you want to do is you'll see all of these score lines all in the corner here they all come in one and a half and come down one and a half so this is the one we need to start off with first and this is where your t-square ruler will come in really handy because you know the top part here allows you to or in my case it fits perfectly on this hunky dory scoreboard you can actually slide it along so it's really you know it does work very well but it with the top piece here and it enables you to know that that ruler and that that line is dead straight so all I need to do here is I'll pop it on this side so it's lining up here with the one and a half notch I then want to start scoring one and a half inches down so here's my one and a half on the left hand side here so I've just popped my stylus in and I'm going to score all the way down until I get to five and a half inches just here because that means then I'm one and a half inches up from the bottom okay then you want to move this along 
So we've just done this score line here. Then we want to come along to two and a half. So I'm just moving my ruler along to two and a half here. I'm going to hover along and then I'm going to start scoring again at one and a half and just follow that previous score line you've done down to five and a half. Okay. Then you want to come across to three and three quarters. So just here. And again, come down to one and a half and start scoring all the way down to five and a half. You've already done then, or if you haven't, but you then want to score at five inches all the way down. And then you want to come along here and you're then going to score at six and a quarter. Again, start from one and a half down to five and a half. I've already done my score line, so that's why I'm just trying to make sure I line them back up again, like so. Okay. And then we just want to do the seven and a half and the eight and a half. So again, seven and a half just here. Start at one and a half. And then lastly, the eight and a half, which is just here. Okay. Then what we want to basically do is join up the top of this first score line with the top of the last score line and the bottom of the first score line to the bottom of the last score line. You'll see here. So although I've got them in red because they will become cut lines, I think it's easier to score first. Now also you might decide that you actually want to score those lines first. So, you know, in that case, because we'll flip it now and we'll do these, but you might decide that first of all you want to come down one and a half. So again, just use your T ruler if you've got one. Start scoring from one and a half inches down to eight and a half. Okay, and then along here you'll start scoring at five and a half, but come down one and a half inches first and then score down to eight and a half. Now by doing that you should have joined up all of those score lines there. So basically we have this large rectangle and we want all these score lines within that rectangle. But like I said, you may find it easier. You may decide that you want to do those score lines first, then pop it along this side and do all those ones I've just told you and just make sure they stay within those two lines. However, whatever way you decide to do it, you just need to make sure that everything stays within that rectangle. Okay, so that's all the scoring done. Next, we're going to do our cut lines along these two long vertical um, sex, uh, sides here. So I'm going to get rid of the scoreboard and then using my ruler and my cutting knife, and I've just got my mat down here, you want to lay your ruler down along that one here. This is the one that I'm laying my ruler against, and you're going to cut from there down to there. Okay, it doesn't matter which way up or anything because it's a it's basically a mirror image. All the score lines are the same on both halves of this card. So you do want to make sure that you get it right on that line. And then nice straight cut. If you want to do this on a trimmer, then that's you know totally fine, you can do. I do like cutting this way, just feel I get you know real precision. But whatever works best for you. Next we just need to do some folding. So like I said, it doesn't matter whether you've got this end facing you or that end, they're both the same. But this first score line here, you need to make it a mountain fold. So you want to fold it down. The next one is a valley, then a mountain, then a valley, then a mountain, then a valley, and you will finish again with a mountain. And you'll see there how everything folds and this will naturally be popping up. So you just want to burnish that down. So go over all those score lines. And just burnish them well. So again I'll just open it up, I started with a mountain and then concertina fold, valley, mountain, the middle score line is a, mount, is a valley, then a mountain, valley, finish with a mountain and you've got this piece here. Okay so I'm just going to go in here and just really burnish well. Now this will fit into a 5 by 7 envelope but if you have dimension to it then I will recommend one of my box envelopes and I'll just link that one up here now. So just burnish that well but now it will stand up because during the live I did suggest that maybe because I hadn't made it at that point at the beginning but I did think that might you might need a stopper in here because I thought it would kind of fan out and just flatten but it doesn't. It, I promise you it does hold itself. I'll just bring it back in really well. This is you know quite a smooth surface you know there's a lot on this now and it, it stands up perfectly so 
but there is the option if you did want to to put um, some card stock in here. A bit like I do on my rocker cards, if you're a bit unsure what I'm talking about. On all the rocker cards, I always add a little stopper just to stop it kind of spreading out. So this is now all ready for us to decorate, and I've already gone ahead and done all of my stamped images and inking. So I've created this fun scene here. I have gone a little bit darker with this. It's, it's kind of like the, I've got the sloth here, he's really fun. And I did say during the live, I've got a really nice one, um, you know, a nice character. Um, if you do have the, there is a, there's another really nice sloth image that I used. I think it was a maybe possibly an apple blossom stamp set. I used it for the swing card and I've got the sloth that swings. I'll link that one up here, it's really nice. So if you do have the sloth that you used for that card that I know some of you did go and purchase, you could use him in this one. But he's a really, really fun character. And um, you'll see here that obviously the bark or the, you know, the tree trunk that he's kind of hanging from doesn't meet here, but I'm actually gonna connect it with these leaves so you end up not seeing anything. And again, I just thought that was good to show you that sometimes an image might not fit an area, um, but you can then start to add other things to kind of connect it all. So this piece here I've, is a letter C, okay? This is how I, was, I found it easier to work this all out and to kind of describe it when I was making the live because I want to have this on here. And it was the same kind of mat that I'd done for my side panel card, I think it was called. But you'll see that it sits perfectly. Now, if you don't want to faff about cutting down and cutting this C shape, you could just have two strips. And during the live, um, I think I did touch on it, but if you want to do them at one and a quarter by four and three quarters, you could do one here and one here. And then the strip in the middle here, I would suggest that you do it at um, four by uh, one and a quarter. Okay, and just repeat the same on the back if you want to. But I really like the thought of having this scene of you know these images here and these are all stamps from that stamp set even the little ants here that I've stamped on the side of the tree and this is just this stamp and I just stamped lots of them but I'm actually going to then pop some more over there as well okay but to create this one here you want a piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters okay you then want to come down on the right hand side you want to come down at one and a quarter and come up one and a quarter so just mark with a pencil and then using your T-square ruler, come in from that one and a quarter, three and a half inches, and put a little pencil mark there. Again, come in along this one here, three and a half inches, and put a little pencil mark. And then draw a pencil line joining those two markers up. So you'll now have a pencil line like this on your white piece of cardstock. And you then want to cut that out. You can use your scissors, you can use a trimmer, it's entirely up to you. And it will give you that shape. And then you can just, you know, decorate that entirely how you want. And you'll see how I just roughly um, coloured it off the, the stamped image there. But again, that's all going to get covered now with these leaves. Now for the grass inside, if you did want to recreate this, I've done it exactly the same way as I've done the live. And I will link the live video in the description box. Now these pieces here are going to sit perfectly in all of these pieces here, like so. Okay, looks really nice. Um, these here, if you've been following my channel for a long time, I, you, I made using my vegetable scissors and it's just really easy, really quick and it will give you the, the width there. As you'll see I've got all those strips cut and then I just went in with my scissors, a bit like a hairdresser and kind of chopped up the edges there. I just wanted it a bit more uneven. So these pieces here are all four inches wide, and then I've got two that were two and a half, so four by two and a half, and then this is four by two, okay? So I'm gonna stick those in like this. So this one will stick on the back of the last one. This one will stick on the middle one, on the back of it, and this one will stick on the front there, like so. You see, we've got that really cool grass effect. He is then gonna hang above like this, and this is gonna stick on here. I think what I'll do first of all is I'll stick all of these pieces down. Okay, so you can see straight away we've got a really nice scene coming together. So now I need to attach our lovely sloth who's just chilling out there. So I've cut all of these. Again, all of this is from that stamp set that I showed you. But first of all, I just want to create, I really want to cover up the top of the tree there, that kind of like so. And then I'm going to extend this one underneath and attach it 
to there, can you see? So I'm going to stick these two down first of all just to disguise the tree trunk and I might bring in a few more little, there's some other flowers um, on the stamp set, um, I think they've got like some berries or something so they could look quite good maybe at the top here. So I'm just going to pop two there and do the same on this side. Okay, while they were drying I've just stuck those two down there as well, it just gives it some dimension and um, I love to you know, do all of that kind of stuff with these cards. So now I'm just going to add some glue to the back of that one, slide it under there, like so, and I'm just going to sit that there, so that's perfect, I can join that one up, and then again with this one here, like so, so they're going to join perfectly. Just let that grab for a second. Now with this one here, I'm actually going to use this one and it's going to kind of come down from underneath the leaves here and it's going to attach behind that piece there as well. So I'm just going to let that all set and then this one I'm just going to stick in behind here. Okay, and then just to make sure he does really you know, stick and quickly, I'm just going to use some of my Cosmic Shimmer Glue here because this just grabs very fast. So just pops a little bit there and then I can bring him in and pop that one there and then those two there and then this one here. I've just taken that one out actually I don't know if I like it there now so I'm going to just take a little bit of that away Again, pop a little bit of glue on the ends like so and a little bit on the end of there. I just want enough just to tack it all down so that one can slide in there and then this one can just grab like so. So you know don't worry sometimes if things don't always kind of you know quite fit or maybe match up just look at ways to connect them using other stamps because now that's all connected and he's hanging from that tree I think it just looks so fun, it's such a, a lovely looking card. So I'm not sure I like that there now, I think what I might do is just trim a little bit off of this and maybe have it poking up there because it's nice to have that red there, you've got the pink up the top there, so I think we'll stick this one behind here. And then I don't like to waste anything, well I wouldn't anyway, I'd put this actually in my little jar, but. I think maybe we could have another one hanging down here, so let's make this a bit fuller. And then we're going to have a little look to see what kind of berries or some kind of colour to maybe have up in the trees here. I've also, you will see the glossy accents possibly on his eyes. I put them on there just so they, um, yeah, again, it just gives it some dimension. So I'm going to have a quick little look, see if there's anything more to add to it, and then I'll be back. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip off the very end of the top one, so again on here, and I'm just going to add some Nouveau drops. So I've got this one here, which is one of the vintage drops, and it is the colour Postbox Red. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just add a little a cluster of maybe three of them. Just okay, there you go. I think they look really good. So not only do they add some colour, but also some dimension and texture which I think is really good. And you've got the shine there with the glossy accents when it hits the light. Really love how this one's come together. So I can't stand that one up because otherwise those Nouveau drops will start rolling. But here's the other one again, just so you can see that one and how it stands. They're so fun. I can't wait to give this one to my sister and my brother-in-law. And uh, this one here will go into my stash and no doubt one of my friends will use this one for their children's, you know, friends and things like that. So I know it's going to be well received. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it today. I'll share as many links as I can in the description box as always. And uh, yeah, I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.